All right, we are going to begin our discussion of um, physical agents. So um, this, just in this section of the lecture, we're going to talk about what are physical agents, um, the categories, and the effects of physical agents, um, general contraindications and precautions. Um, we will later on, when we talk about each individual agent, we will um, discuss specific contraindications and precautions. Um, we're going to talk about evaluation and planning for the use of physical agents. How do you figure out which one you're going to use? And then how do you document it? And why do you document it? So for this lecture, I have four learning objectives for you. Um, and these are listed in the module under learning objectives. Um, I want you to describe, be able to describe three categories of physical agents and be able to give a clinical example of each. Um, be able to state which physical agent would be indicated or contraindicated for a given treatment goal. Um, and we'll talk about individual uh, treatment goals. Um, state the four general contraindications and precautions for physical agent use and the reasons why each would be contraindicated. So when we talk about the individual um, modalities or physical agents, we will talk about specific contraindications having to do with that modality. Um, but there are some that are just general for any physical agent you use on patient general contraindications. Um, I want you to be able to state the purposes for documentation. So um, since the first quarter um, you started working on documentation, you did more of it um, this summer in your acute care class. And so we're, we're going to continue to develop that um, throughout the program. So what are physical agents? Um, so physical agents are energy and materials that are applied to patients to assist in their rehabilitation. So um, <clears throat> they can include heat, cold, water, um, pressure, as in you know soft tissue mobilization um, or other kinds of pressure, um, sound, as in ultrasound, electrical currents, and electromagnetic radiation. So um, a physical agent, the term physical agent, is usually um, describing the type of energy that you are applying to the patient. Um, the, the term physical agent is used interchangeable with physical modality, biophysical agent, or just modality. So a lot of times in um, PT and in this class, you will hear us refer to them as just modalities. And that's what we mean um, by modalities. It's a physical agent that we apply to a patient. So um, the terms can be used interchangeably, but just so you know what we're talking about. So the categories of physical agents um, that we are going to discuss in this course are thermal agents, mechanical agents, and electromagnetic agents. So um, thermal agents include superficial heating and deep heating agents and superficial cooling agents. Uh, mechanical agents um, are, include traction, compression, water, and sound. And electromagnetic agents um, include electromagnetic fields and electrical currents. So um, there are some things that fall in more than one category, such as ultrasound. It can be a mechanical agent. It can be a thermal agent. Um, water can also have mechanical and thermal effects. So <clears throat> it, it's, um, there's not, it's not necessarily uh, distinct categories, but general categories. So thermal agents, they um, are used to transfer energy to a patient to increase or decrease tissue temperature. So um, hot packs, ice packs, ultrasound, diathermy, whirlpool, um, all of these things are used to um, affect tissue temperature, whether we're trying to increase or decrease it, and we'll talk about the different reasons for that. So um, some of the temperature changes that we um, cause with thermal agents are superficial, and some of them are deep. And when we talk about the individual agents, we will talk about the individual contraindications and precautions, as well as indications. When would we do it? When would we not do it? So throughout the course, I really want you to focus on the, those three things. Indications, when do we use this agent? Contraindications, when do we never use this agent? 
And um, precautions, meaning when do we have to be super careful about it? I mean, you should be super careful all the time, but um, we'll talk about those contraindications and precautions for everything we do. Mechanical agents, uh, you apply force to increase or decrease pressure on the body. So the one thing that I don't have listed here is soft tissue mobilization because that's not discussed in the book, but we're going to um, use other sources to discuss it. That's going to be our first modality that we talk about. Um, but it, uh, soft tissue mobilization, mobilization is a mechanical agent, um, as, as well as water or hydrotherapy, traction, compression, and ultrasound can also be mechanical agents. Electromagnetic agents apply energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation or electrical current. So um, UV radiation is um, used more in wound care. You don't see it in general PT settings that much unless you work in a specific wound care clinic, but we're going to just talk about it briefly towards the end of the quarter. Um, infrared radiation um, is not as common, um, and we'll talk about why when we talk about it, as well as laser and um, diathermy and electrical current. So physical agents can be used um, to affect a lot of different things in the body. Um, primarily, we're trying to either reduce tissue inflammation, um, accelerate tissue healing, relieve pain, and we'll talk more about pain. We talked about it some this summer, and we're going to talk about it again. Um, we want to, sometimes we want to alter collagen extensibility. And um, sometimes we want to modify muscle tone. So we're going to talk about all of those things. So I love, love, love the tables in this book. <laughs> if, you, if you like nothing else about the book, it's a good book, but I love the tables. They organize things so nicely. So um, this is table 1.2, and it... Um, Talks, it talks about the, how you use physical agents to promote tissue healing. So it's organized by the stage of tissue healing, initial injury, chronic, or remodeling stage, and we'll talk about those individual ones. Um, the goals of the treatment, what physical agents can be effective, and which ones are contraindicated. So when you have an initial injury, we want to prevent further injury or bleeding, and we want to potentially clean the open wound if we're working in a wound care setting. Um, so um, for preventing further injury or bleeding, you get static compression or cryotherapy, ice therapy, um, cold therapy. Um, for cleaning an open wound, hydrotherapy can be used. And they talk about immersion or non-immersion, um, and we'll just really briefly go over that. Um, in uh, one of the modules, but uh, hydrotherapy is not going to be a main focus for this class. Um, contraindicated, what don't we want to do in initial injury? We probably don't want to exercise because um, we, that prevents further injury or bleeding. Intermittent traction, definitely not. Um, motor level electrical stim, which is uh, we're trying to um, get our muscles to contract using electrical stim. We don't want to do exercise, we don't want to contract our muscles to cause further injury or bleeding, so we're not going to do that. And thermotherapy, because we don't want to increase circulation, we want to decrease circulation. So um, you can read through the rest of the chart and um, get some ideas. But one of the things that is more of a trend in documentation now, and I think it's a, probably a good trend, and we're going to look for that in soap notes that we're doing this quarter and beyond, is um, not that you just wrote down what you did, but you wrote down why you did it. So you could say, I used um, electrical stim in order to increase circulation, you know, in this stage of chronic inflammation, or um, I used ultrasound to promote tissue healing, um, or I used motor electrical stim to regain or maintain strength. So, um, you want to say why you did things. So it's good to know. What's the goal of the treatment? What are effective agents? What do you want to avoid? So um, the treatment of pain, um, I, there's a lecture that I have recorded for you talking about pain. Um, it's a continuation of what we talked about this summer with pain, and then we will go into more detail um, next quarter. So pain is important. 
it's one of the things that brings people into therapy uh, largely most of the time. So um, this is just different effective agents and contraindicated agents for the treatment of pain. Um, for treatment of motion restrictions, um, you can have muscle weakness is causing motion restriction, pain um, with motion or rest, soft tissue shortening, um, bony block. It's, there are not a lot of effective physical agents for that besides surgery, um, but um, we'll talk more about that in your orthopedics class. Um, but there are different things that we use to treat motion restrictions and then some things that we don't do. We don't want to exercise into pain. That's a bad idea. So general contraindications for any physical agent. Pregnancy. Um, this Okay, your patient is building a new human being here. We do not want to um, have any negative effect on that. So physical agents are not usually used for someone who is pregnant. That is something you really need to know about your patient. Um, pregnancy is a contraindication for just about anything. Not to say if someone was pregnant that maybe you couldn't do ultrasound on their foot, but, um, but really you don't want to do it. So um, the physical agent is energy that might physiologically affect the development of the fetus. Um, we really don't want to do that. So um, fetal development is adversely affected by lots of different influences, some of which are subtle. So um, it's just in general, don't mess with pregnant women. Um, there's lots of things we can do in therapy for them, um, but physical agents are not the choice. Malignancy or cancer tumor. So in uh, 111 this week, we are talking about cancer, and um, that is another contraindication um, for the application of physical agents. So the energy produced by the agent or the physiological effects might reach the malignant tissue or alter the circulation of the tissue. Some physical agents are known to accelerate growth or metastasis of malignant tissue. So um, one of the things that um, a malignant tissue does is it uh, stimulates angiogenesis, creation of a new blood supply so it can support the tumor. So we don't want to do anything that increases the blood supply because we don't want to support the tumor. So um, there are a lot of physical agents that um, absolutely uh, shouldn't be using with cancer. Anytime you um, are doing something, a, a mechanical agent where you might break up um, tumor tissue and spread it throughout the body, that's a bad idea. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So don't mess with pregnancy, don't mess with cancer. Um, so there are times when there might be an area where can they might have cancer in a certain area and you think, oh, well, they've got this cancer, I can do ultrasound on their ankle, but um, malignant tissue can metastasize and might be present in areas where it hasn't been detected yet. So we don't want to take the chance. It's not worth it. Um, pacemakers or other implanted electrical devices um, is a general contraindication for any physical agent because the energy of the agent can re reach the implant and affect it. It can alter the um, functioning of the device. So it's not just um, pacemakers, it's also deep brain stimulators, spinal cord stimulators, implanted um, cardioverter defibrillators or ICDs. Um, there are a lot of new implants now. Um, a lot of type 1 diabetics have insulin pump implants. So any implanted electrical device is a contraindication for a physical agent. Um, impaired sensation or mentation are contraindications or precautions um, because we have the patient has a limited ability to report the effect of the agent. So um, it might just be that they can't feel it if they have impaired sensation, so they can't tell you if it's hurting them. Or they're just, um, it's not in their level of awareness if they have impaired mentation, and then that is dangerous for them as well. So um, there, for impaired sensation or mentation, it's definitely a contraindication or a precaution. There are times when you can use it, but you have to be 
super, super cautious and super, super careful. So a lot of times there is another treatment that you can do that's going to have the same effect or a better effect that is not putting the patient into danger. So of course the number one thing is we don't want to hurt our patients. So when we're choosing a physical agent, um, the physical agent can be used to either address the primary problem or it can be a secondary problem that um, might be likely to respond to available um, interventions. So if somebody has a primary problem or a problem that's likely to respond to treatment, that's a priority for using a physical agent. Um, if you have treatments that address more than one problem simultaneously, um, that, is another, that is another thing, like you're using something in combination um, that's going to have a positive effect on your patient. Um, that's a consideration for using a physical agent. Sometimes um, the physical agent only treats the symptoms. It doesn't do anything about the underlying problem. Um, there are occasions when you might consider that, but it's a lower priority. Um, you're probably going to choose another intervention. And of course, um, the PT chooses the interventions that are going to be used on the patient, and the PTA follows the plan of care. There are times, though, that come up where um, you might feel a patient is going to respond well or meets these criteria on a, for a particular agent that the PT didn't put in the original plan of care. And at that point, it's perfectly reasonable for you to go to the PT and say, hey, how do you think this person would do with pulsed ultrasound or something like that? And usually the PT says, oh, that's a great idea. I wish I'd thought of that. Let's add that to the plan of care. And you're going to document that. So. Um, even though we don't come up with the plan of care, we don't do the evaluation as PTAs, um, we certainly can contribute to um, uh, choosing a physical agent. So um, the other thing that happens, um, that has happened to me um, several times over the last however many years, um, is a physical agent is recommended either by a physician or a physical therapist that I know is contraindication for that patient, is contraindicated. And it is my responsibility um, as a licensed physical therapist assistant to point that out that we cannot do this on this patient. So I've had people where one of the contraindications for ultrasound is um, cemented joint replacements because the ultrasound can um, vibrate the cement and actually break it up and loosen their prosthesis. So you don't ever want to do um, ultrasound on someone with a prosthetic hip or prosthetic knee. Um, so I've had doctors prescribe ultrasound for someone that had a tight knee after a knee replacement and I had to go back to them and say um, we can't do this. <laughs> it's contraindicated. Um, and then they go, it's usually a duh moment for the doctor. They go, oh right, forgot about that. <laughs> So same thing with the PT. I've had a PT put um, a contraindication in the plan of care. They say, oh, we're going to do ultrasound or electrical stem on this person. I say, we can't do e-stem on this person. They have an implant. Um, or uh, we, you know, we can't do ultrasound on this person. They have a contraindication. So even though we don't uh, choose the plan of care um, and evaluate the patient, it is definitely up to us to know contraindications and precautions, and also indications. Maybe there's something that the PT didn't think about when they were doing the eval. So when we're selecting physical agents, we want to think what are the goals and effects of treatment. So those lovely charts in the book that I like so much um, will say what are our goals? Or do we want to um, decrease pain? Do we want to increase um, circulation? Do we want to promote tissue healing? Um, are there any contraindications or precautions present? If there are, well, <laughs> we're going to come up with something else. Um, is there evidence for the use of this physical agent um, it, with this particular condition? We want to do things that are evidence-based, that there's proof that it's effective, um, and so that is a consideration. Um, cost, convenience, and availability. Um, there might be some physical agents that... Um, would be helpful, but the patient is not going to have access to them. So um, you you decide you're not going to use them. Sometimes we'll have a patient, um, we have a pool in our clinic and we do aquatic therapy. We'll have a patient that we think this person would be ideal for aquatic therapy, but 
um, or aquatic exercise, but they, for some, for some reason, they are not able to, they won't be able to continue with it after therapy, um, either because a, a cost restriction or they can't get to a pool, don't have access to a pool for availability. So it's not the ideal um, intervention for them because they won't be able to continue with it. Um, we'll talk about more of those when we talk about specific agents. So when we're using physical agents in combination, um, interventions are generally combined when they have similar effects. Meaning you're not going to do something that increases circulation and then another thing that decreases circulation. Sometimes you might. We'll talk about specific cases with that, like with a contrast bath. Um, but there are certainly things that address a common thing. So um, the classic example is rice, rest, ice, elevation, and compression. They're all combined for treating inflammation. So you have an acute inflammatory um, injury going on. Um, resting, that's the taking the exercise out of it. Icing, elevating, and compressing are all used in combination to treat that inflammation. Um, normally, in PT, physical agents are more commonly used during the initial few sessions, and then we basically we go away from that and go to more active treatment. So the um, active treatment is definitely going to be beneficial to the patient, but sometimes in the initial acute phase, they're not able to do it. So sometimes I'll be working with someone. Um, I've been working with a woman this year who has um, had a, an ankle fracture and she had an open reduction internal fixation surgery and Initially, um, we were doing some, and she's, uh, she's about a year away from her surgery, so it's not um, acute, it's more chronic, and she had some scar tissue restrictions and some other things. So she was having a lot of pain and it was difficult for her to do an active warm-up, like on a bike or um, a recumbent stepper or something like that, and so we were doing ultrasound to um, warm up the tissues before we did some Graston technique, which is instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization, and then exercise at the end of the session followed by ice. Um, now she has um, recovered enough and her motion restriction is less, and she is able to do an active warm up without increasing her pain. So we've gone away from the modalities and now we're doing more of an active warm up. Uh, maybe a little bit of um, Graston and then right into the active exercise. So um, usually we're sort of start maybe starting with physical agents and weaning people off of it. I have to say that in my clinic um, we don't use a ton of physical agents and I, I've heard from um, students coming back from their clinical assignments that that's the case in a lot of clinics. So um, it's not as common as it once was. For documentation, we want our documentation to be effective, accurate, and complete communication to other healthcare professionals um, regarding any exam findings, evaluations, of course the PT does that, um, what interventions we did, and what the plans are. Um, in this day of electronic medical records, everybody, including the patient, can read your note most of the time. So in the, the system that we use, um, the documentation that I do, <clears throat> the patient sees me one day and then they go to their doctor the next day. The doctor can look and see what I wrote, which is kind of nice if they read it. <laughs> and, but the patient can also log on to their My Peace Health portal and they can read my note too. So they can see what I wrote. So you want to make sure it's clear and accurate and um, communicates what you want to communicate. It also serves as a long-term record, so um, if there's ever any litigation having to do with that, um, a lot of times, I've, I've never been involved in any litigation, but some of my colleagues who have, they said that, that a lot of times you are, just, most of the time you're just doing a deposition in a lawyer's office, it doesn't usually come to you going to court, but <clears throat> The only thing that you have to remember that patient is what you wrote in that note. And a lot of times it's a few years after you saw them, so you're not going to remember anything. Um, and a lot of people say, wow, that's, I, I wish I had done a better note in that case. So hopefully that doesn't come up, but it's something to think about. 
And then as far as supporting reimbursement, that's a big issue. Um, and reimbursement is a big issue in healthcare these days and just in general. Um, a lot of Medicare claims are um, denied because of bad um, documentation. And um, we'll talk about that specifically in um, the different agents. And there's a little separate lecture on documentation and um, we'll work on it as you're developing your documentation skills.